Well, good morning, All Saints Church. Good, good to see all of you on this second to last Sunday of Epiphany, as it's called on the church calendar, which is also World Mission Sunday. And I'd invite you to please stand and join together with me as we prepare our hearts to worship our Lord. I will make you as a light for the nations. That my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Praying together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you revealed the way of eternal life to every race and nation. Pour out this gift anew, that by the preaching of the gospel, your salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 86, verses 8 through 13, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 381. Please join in reading the psalm. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor Nor anything like your works. All All the nations you have made made will come and worship you, O Lord, and and glorify your name. For you are great, you do marvelous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. A reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. 
And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. You may be seated. So good to see all of you this morning. And as I said, as we begin our service today is World Mission Sunday on the church calendar. And so um, missions emphasis with our sermon today and very pleased to have the Reverend Dr. Jessica Hughes, longtime missionary to Uganda and serving with SAMS and who also is um, one of our own from here from All Saints Church for many years. Yes. So she's going to be coming in just a moment to bring God's word. I just did want to mention, as I mentioned in my rector's address last Sunday, for those of you that were at the business meeting, we are going to renew the tradition here at All Saints Church that we had for many years of having a missions conference. So there'll be more information coming about that, but it will be again on Sunday, April 14th. And we'll have special events that day and throughout the week. And then the following Sunday, April 21st. So mark your calendars. I'll have more information about that as it draws closer as we go through Lent. But very much looking forward to that. And now I'd invite you to please join in welcoming Reverend Jessica with me. Thank you. And it's such a privilege to be here with you from this side of the communion rail. Well, I'm on the other side usually, which is great. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So as Father Scott mentioned, today is World Mission Sunday, and we are taking a look at the call of God to go and serve him. And I think we often think of missionaries who go to different and faraway places, right? Like Uganda, maybe. Places that involve planes, trains, and automobiles. But I don't think that's necessarily the case. Missions can also be right at home, I would argue. And that just involves walking outside, meeting your neighbors. I have a lot of diversity in my neighborhood, And that's a mission field, too. So we're going to take a brief look, unfortunately, only a brief, because I have a couple other things to do, at the lessons from Genesis and Revelation today. So Genesis 12 is the beginning of mission. There's a lot that happened to get there, and oh, I wish I could talk about it, but we start with creation, and we work our way down to the people of Israel. And we've had the fall, the flood, Chapter 10 is Noah's genealogy, which is important because that's what gets us to Abram. So it's very important to see where Abram is coming from. And chapter 12 begins with God's call to Abram, go. Now that's simple, right? Go. Go where? That's, That's always a good question. And the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred, and your father's house, so he's really leaving. He's leaving his home, his family, his culture. He's going. He's not coming home. I mean, this is go, go, go. Very far. To the land I will show you. No ways, no Google Maps. Go to the land I will show you. 
There's so much obedience here in the turning right and turning left to get where God wants him to be. And then there's the promise. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now there's a lot to unpack here, but all I'm going to emphasize is because of Abram's obedience to go and do what the Lord called him to, the blessing was for him, for his family, but ultimately for all of mankind, because of course that blessing is found in Jesus Christ. And we see this in Galatians 3.8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, as his name was changed, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. And then our reading from Revelation 7 is the bookend to Genesis 12. They mirror each other. And oh, there's so much I want to say, but I'm not going to. So, Revelation 7, beginning at verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Do you notice how active the worship is? This is not just sitting in the pews and saying, oh, we're with God, yay. No, it's, it's active. One, it's everybody. I mean, everybody is there. Everyone. It's so cool. And they're active. They're waving palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice. Praise to the Lord. You know, heaven is not a um, you know, spectator sport. It's, it's active worship. It's going to be so cool. All the saints gathered up in heaven, everyone there. When um, I was in high school, my, high, my senior English teacher, Miss Turner, I had her first period. She told us one of three things every day. One, that she had been teaching for 22 years. Two, that she taught Emmy Lou Harris, the country singer, who was apparently from here. I don't know. Three, that she was an Episcopalian. And at the time, I was too, and I said, oh, Lord, please don't sort us by denomination. I don't, I don't want to be next to Miss Turner in heaven. And... <laughs> Man, the woman was tough, and I've gotten past that, but can you picture everyone being there, not just Anglicans, all Christians from all across the globe, people you've never seen before in heaven? Can you imagine? Isn't that a beautiful picture? And each of the people are there because someone told them about Jesus. Each of the people is in heaven because someone told them about Jesus. Someone participated in God's mission to draw each person there and to the Lord. And while the focus of World Mission Sunday is often on international missions, you don't have to go abroad to be a missionary. All you have to do is walk outside and take a look around. The beautiful thing about this area, Father Scott and Bishop Chris have both observed this, that the nations are here. I mean, the Lord has brought the nations to us. And even better, the nations are in our church. I love this. The nations are in our church. If you have a question about another culture, you don't have to go far to ask. Because they are here. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So are we doing that? Ah, there's a challenge. Are we doing that? Are we taking advantage of the beautiful picture and tapestry that the Lord has presented here? So I would encourage you to take time, meet people, ask questions who are from different cultures of your own, because they all have rich and wonderful stories to tell. Archbishop Beach wrote and asked that in our sermons today that we share what he called the tried and true global Anglican mission partners, and they are many. 
<clears throat> so some of, some of the words I have here are lifted from his letter because it was just easier to copy him. <laughs> I'm being honest about my plagiarism. So first, and by the way, these are all missions, missions that All Saints supports and have been a part of for many years. First, the New Wineskins Missionary Network. That's often known for its tri triannual, triennial, triannual, every three year mission conference. The next one is in September 17th to 20th, 2025. Put it on your calendars. It's a fabulous time. It's the clearinghouse for Anglican missions. But they're not just the conference. They have a lot of resources, a lot of training, mentoring. If you ever want to know anything about Anglican missions, go to New Wineskins and they can tell you. If you are interested in short-term missions, SOMA, Sharing of Ministries Abroad, All Saints has a very long history with SOMA. They are a fantastic short-term mission agency um, supporting the church in the world globally. For long-term missions, there's the Anglican Frontier Missions, AFM. They go to the places where the gospel has not been, and they go to plant churches and plant disciples in unreached people groups. The church's ministry among Jewish people, CMJ, has been sharing Jesus' love with Jews for over 200 years. I didn't realize they'd been in, um, in mission that long, sharing the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. The Anglican Relief and Development Fund partners with local provinces, dioceses, and churches to fund effective development programs like microfinance to um, enable people to build businesses and expand to become self-supporting. And they also distribute relief aid when disaster strikes. And I've saved my favorite for the last. Um, I have a strong affection for SAMS, the Society of Anglican Missionaries and Senders as they're my sending society, and they support established Anglican churches around the world. And not because I'm shilling for them, but I have a short video from Sam's to show you what some missionaries think about being on the field. So John, do we have that? When I think about the very beginning of wanting to work in mission. I, I guess it was uh, the idea of going to a different culture seemed very, uh, seemed wonderful. Even though I was a well-read person and had a good education and had attended church all my life, missionary was actually a new vocabulary word for me. I knew nothing about missionaries. I never heard of one. I certainly never met one. And here she was talking to us. I, I never would have guessed that this is where I would be. Uh, my life ambition as a teenager and in my early 20s was to be a ski bum, mountain bum. Uh, I was going to be living in a truck. I think a huge part of our refinement of call was to be feeling those emotions was like, okay, <laughs> not everyone would feel this way. If, if you are discerning a call to missions, pay attention. That is not a small thing. He had everybody close their eyes and imagine the typical Anglican. Now this was, you know, a North American diocese. And so we all imagined uh, an older lady in our church. Uh, and then he said, well, the typical Anglican is a 20-something-year-old Nigerian woman who makes a living by subsistence farming. And uh, that kind of shifted my perspective on what the global church looks like. Something that sticks in my mind from my time in Panama. In South America. In Africa. In Honduras. Peru. I had the opportunity to worship uh, with Tibetan and Chinese brothers and sisters. And I didn't understand a word that was said. And I wept the whole time. And I apologized. I said, I'm sorry for being a stranger here, <laughs> weeping at your service. And they said, you're not a stranger. You're our brother. If we were going to go into the mission field, the SAMS was the way for us to uh, get everything that we would need to be successful on the mission field. SAMS came along with this beautiful sense of 
in their very name, missionaries and senders, one together. But there's a lot more behind the scenes uh, that takes place as far as missionary support is concerned. It's not just the finances, it's not just even having a church or two praying for you while you're there, which of course is very, very important. But you have an organization that has now decades of experience in sending missionaries overseas. And, and just the fact that for Sam's, we were both missionaries and not just I. I think about the support that Sam's has given to make all of that possible uh, and the encouragement um, and it's truly been pastoral, uh, the care that we've received uh, from Sam's from the beginning. Our hearts were just filled with <laughs> um, gratitude to be there alongside these people. And so we just said, okay, this is, must be how God created us and like God is stirring this for a reason. And if you seek out the Lord and the Lord opens up a door for you and you start living your life, with Christ, all of a sudden your life becomes an adventure. You're no longer just in a journey. Now it's an adventure. And the funny, and the reason why I say it's an adventure is because the Lord really does a lot of unexpected things. And that is amazing. We were at the new Wineskins Conference and Heidi Smith, who is a, a Sam's missionary in Chile, got up and spoke a 10 minute speech in the morning. And one of the things she said was, you have to go where God calls you. Go where God calls you. That's the command. Um, Nate Twitchell, he was the gentleman in the blue shirt who talked about um, worshiping with the Tibetan Christians and, and just weeping. Um, my first Sunday in Uganda, I had the same experience. I was in seminary and I was, I was the most reluctant missionary ever. That's a really great story that I don't have time to tell you, but it's really great. I never wanted to be a missionary. And, you know, here I am. But to be where God has called you to be, and the, and the, the worship was so joyous, and in English, in Luganda, and other, and other languages, I just wept because I was where God had called me to be. It's um, no small thing to answer his call. And so, again, the mission of God is to call all people to himself. So the question is, where is God sending you? Because he is calling you. It's not like, oh, Jessica, yeah, she's the one who's going. No, it's not just me. It's everyone. Where is God calling you? Is it to minister with inmates in Kairos? Is it to minister to those with unplanned pregnancies? Or to provide food for those with food insecurities? or to use your gifts someplace closer to home or further from home. It doesn't matter where. The point is that you go and that you answer the call that God has given you. And I would like to end with something a little different, a contemplative exercise called Lectio Divina, which means divine reading. So I want you to get comfortable. No, really, get comfortable. Indeed. And then close your eyes. I'm giving you permission to close your eyes in church. So I'm going to read the gospel reading three times. And so I'm going to give you directions. We're going to pray, and then we'll do it. So the first time I'm going to read the passage, I'm going to read through for, for, for familiarity. The second time, I'll ask you to listen for a word or a phrase that is an invitation. And the last time, I'll ask you to listen to, for an invitation from the Lord of what he wants you to know, do, or become. So please close your eyes. Let's take a couple deep breaths. Lord Jesus, 
I thank you that you are here. Send your Holy Spirit to speak to your people through your word. So this first time, I am just reading for familiarity. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now this time, listen for a word or a phrase that is an invitation. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And this last time, listen for an invitation from the Lord of what he wants you to know, do, or become. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold... I am with you always to the end of the age. So how was that? Different, huh? So I want to encourage you, if you heard a word from the Lord, share it with someone. Share it with one of us. Share it with each other. The body is here to support and equip each other. It's impossible to go on mission without preparation or training, whether it's a mission here or a mission abroad. And that's what the church is here to do. So, call is confirmed in community. So share what the Lord is whispering to you. Let us uphold one another and lift each other up as we discern what the Lord has called each of us to do as we carry out his mission. Amen. And I'd invite you to please stand as you're able and join together with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel or be seated as you're able for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, Chris, our Bishop, Scott and Jed, our priests, Andy and Julie, our deacons, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, for all who teach and disciple others, especially the Reverend Dr. Jessica Hughes serving with Sam's, for Alice and Barfoot serving in Uganda. Today we also pray for the clergy and congregation of Light of Christ Anglican Church in Heathsville, Virginia, and for New Creation Church in Hagerstown, Maryland. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the ACNA cycle of prayer, today we pray for the Anglican Diocese of the South, Archbishop Foley Beach and his wife Allison, and Bishop Frank Lyons and his wife Shani. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our church, as we work to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority and all in public service, especially Joseph, our president, Glenn, our governor, and for those serving in our military. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you created one human family. You have made each of us in your image, and you have endowed every person with great dignity. We pray for those experiencing hunger and food insecurity in our community. Grant that we may all share the fruits of the earth with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all expectant mothers and unborn children, that they may be protected and delivered safely. We pray for the elderly, those with infirmities or disabilities, for those who are alone and all at risk and vulnerable people. As persons created in your image, may they receive proper care, their dignity and worth be affirmed, and their lives protected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those experiencing the violence of war in Sudan, Ukraine, Congo, Israel, and Gaza, you may add your own petitions at this time, silently or aloud. For the channel that's battling a stomach bug, and for Tara Peterson as she recovers from pneumonia. We give thanks for those who celebrate their birthdays. Miles, Genevieve, Rudy, Aaron, Reagan, Colin, Christiana, Lilia, Lenora, Devin. There are no anniversaries this month. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection and thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Together. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, thought word, word, and deed, by what, by what we, we have done, and, and by what, what we have left undone. We have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors, our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are truly sorry, and, and we humbly repent. repent. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy on us and, and forgive us, that we, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of name. your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to greet one with God's sign of peace. Well, good morning again, everyone. You may be seated. A um, number of announcements I want to bring to your attention. First of all, um, next Saturday is our... Is that, is that me popping like that back here? Huh, I don't know what's going on. It's not touching my face. Your heart beating. Let's try that. <laughs> that better, Pete? <laughs> um, back here? Sorry. Yes, we'll see what happens. So our next food giveaway is this coming Saturday, February 10th, and we are expecting a significant turnout of people like we have every month. Most months it's um, between 275 and 300 families that come through. Um, wonderful opportunities to serve um, both Thursday and Friday, getting things ready, as well as Saturday morning um, beforehand, setting up, um, serving our neighbors from 10 till 12, and then clean up as well. We will be receiving um, fresh baked goods and fresh produce here on Friday evening if you want to bring those items by between 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. And as I say every month, um, serving at the food giveaway is a wonderful way to get to know um, some folks in the church you may not know, and also to serve our neighbors experiencing food insecurity at the same time. Uh, following today's service, we will have our quarterly meet and greet. For those of you who are relatively new to All Saints Church, if you've not been to a meet and greet before, we would love to have you join us. It will take place immediately after the service back in the children's wing, so you just follow the hallway down past the restrooms and just keep weaving around, and you will find it. There is child care provided, and we'll have some light snacks, some refreshments, and this will be an opportunity to get to know some of the staff and leadership a little bit better and an opportunity in a more intimate setting to ask any questions you may have about All Saints Church. So we welcome you to be a part of that and look forward to seeing you. We're also getting ready to begin our next confirmation and membership course, which will begin on, um, let me make sure I get the date right here, on Wednesday, March 6th. And that is in preparation to be received as a member or confirmed as a member um, when Bishop Chris makes his next visit, which will be in November, um, actually be Sunday, November 3rd this year. So if you have any questions about that, you can contact the church office or email Father Jed. Lent is almost upon us, and we will have a Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper on Tuesday, February 13th from 5 to 7.30. That will take place here in the church atrium. We would ask you to RSVP um, for the meal, and also you can sign up to serve. Both of those things can be done via the church website, or you can call the church office as well. Just a wonderful time of fellowship on Shrove Tuesday. And then on Ash Wednesday, the next day, we will have four um, 
Holy Eucharist that day with imposition of ashes as we begin Lent. We will have a service, Spoken Eucharist, both at 6.30 a.m. and at 8 a.m. as we do every Wednesday. We'll have a service at noon and then a service at 7 p.m. The 7 p.m. service will also have child care provided. So uh, lots of opportunities to come out and begin a right at Holy Lent. And as I said last week, I'll say again, I'll say it again next week. If you have to choose between Shrove Tuesday, which is a wonderful time of fellowship, and Ash Wednesday, you choose Ash Wednesday, okay? Um, Shrove Tuesday is wonderful. It's fun. It's social. But Ash Wednesday is the beginning of a right in Holy Lent in a day we really should come together and prepare our hearts of this season of considering why our Lord came and died for us and the lengths God has gone to in sending his son to redeem sinful people like you and me and how much God loves us. And so I um, would encourage you to be um, preparing for Lent and again coming out on Ash Wednesday for one of the services. If you want to come to all four like some of us, you're welcome to be there for all four as well. I don't think many people will take us up on that. But, um, other, oh, one other announcement. We're talking about Lent, the start of Lent, but also we're beginning sign-ups for the Road to Resurrection outreach as well today. Hard to believe, but Easter's very early this year. And so our Road to Resurrection outreach to the community will take place on Saturday, March 30th, here in the, in the morning here at the church. And you can begin signing up to serve in different roles for that outreach. Today, there will be a table set up out in the atrium. And um, would, there are both costumes and non tossed costume roles, roles that are up front and roles that are behind the scenes. But it's like our drive through living nativity uh, it takes a lot of people to... Um, to carry, on, to carry on or pull, it off this, pull off this outreach effectively. And it's a wonderful time to tell people and share in our community, share with them the story of Christ's death and resurrection on our behalf. So I would encourage you to sign up to participate in that. And then finally, if you are new to All Saints Church today, we again want to extend a warm welcome to you. And in addition to the meet and greet, if you're able to participate in that, uh, there are also welcome cards in the backs of your pews. And we would ask you if you would be so kind either to fill that card out by hand, drop it in the offering basket when it comes by you a little bit later in the service, or you can also uh, scan the QR code, whichever you prefer, and connect with us that way. And we simply want to know how we can serve you and also answering any questions you may have about All Saints Church or about the Christian faith. We had a wonderful time yesterday with our new vestry, a vestry retreat, and um, with our nine vestry, six returning, and three new members. And I'm going to ask those folks to come forward now for a moment and I'll both introduce them to you and commission them and also have a transfer of spiritual authority for those who are um, leaving their offices and transitioning off of the vestry I'm with those who are new. And so, let's see. I'm also going, let's see. Catherine Monroe. Kind of back there you are, yes. If you could come out, because I'm going to have you transfer our spiritual authority to our new senior warden. And is, is Dawn Smuts here this morning? No, Dawn's not here. We will do that, John, in a, another meeting. So, everyone turn around and face. Um, Elba, Simon, Will, Kat, and Sue. And Anne, over here, are returning vestry members. And then, as a, from our election at the business meeting last week, T.C. Andrews, Scott Reichert, and John Fair are our new vestry members. And we'll commission all of them, again, for this term of vestry. And then yesterday, I'm doing a prayerful time of discernment. Um, our new senior warden is Simon Cronier. Our new, he's over here. If you don't know, Simon, wave and jump up and down and all that stuff. <laughs> our new junior warden is Ann Coppersmith. Simon was junior warden and now was discerned by the vestry to be senior warden. And then John Fair is our new secretarial registrar, which means he gets to do a lot of writing in meetings. And so what I'd like to do first is commission all of them. And then I would like to have um, Catherine transfer her spiritual authority as outgoing senior warden to Simon. And then Simon to transfer his outgoing spiritual authority as junior warden to Anne. And then because Dawn's not able to be here this morning, we will do that with John at our first regular vestry meeting. Dawn will be there um, to report on the minutes from the last um, vestry meeting. So um, I'm going to ask you all to turn and face me. If you would go over and get towards Simon inside the rail here, that would be good. I'm going to ask all you to stretch your hand toward these brothers and sisters. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. 
He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. Let us pray. O eternal God and heavenly Father, the foundation of all wisdom and the source of all courage, enlighten with your grace the wardens and vestry of this congregation, and so rule their minds and guide their counsels, that in all things they may seek your glory and promote the mission of your church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of God and as rector of this congregation, I commission each of you as vestry members of this parish, and I invest you with the spiritual authority to act in that capacity. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, one of the things that we are very intentional here about at All Saints Church is transferring spiritual authority. And the idea is when we are entrusted with spiritual authority for a particular ministry or role, whatever that is, then God will lead us. You know, um, sometimes folks would say, a little teaching moment here for just for a second, you know, well, I think we should have done that or we should have done that. Why did the vestry decide that? Well, not that the vestry is perfect. We are men and women of of, with feet of clay, just like you all, but you can't expect, I mean, unless it's something overtly sinful, not given, but, but you can't expect God to speak to someone who's not entrusted with that role in spiritual authority. God is speaking to us, just like as a rector of this church, things that are prerogative of the bishop, God's not going to speak to me about it. He's going to speak to the bishop and perhaps the standing committee. Follow the principle that I'm I'm elucidating here. And so God speaks to us in, with regard to the role he's called us to in the position or the ministry we've been entrusted with. So what we want to do is Catherine has served as our senior warden for the past year, and she's just going to in, transfer that spiritual authority as senior warden to Simon. And then Simon is going to transfer his spiritual authority as junior warden to Anne. So Catherine, lead as you um, feel led of the Lord, and Simon then receive that. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of Catherine, for being a, the senior woman for the last year, for leading us and guiding us. Lord, we just ask that you depart in peace to serve you in other ways. And Lord, in your holy name, I accept your authority in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And just said, she'll meet Simon in the middle. Uh. Lord, we just thank you for the gifts that you've given Anne, for her serving on this vestry for this last year. Lord, in your holy name, we transfer mm -hmm. the, your spirit, uh, the spiritual authority to Anne to deal with in the position of junior warden for this upcoming year. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Lord, I thank you for Simon being a wonderful junior warden and now being a wonderful senior, going to be a wonderful senior warden, I accept the responsibility of being a junior warden from Simon and from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you all. Let's express appreciation to these folks. <laughs> you may be seated. And as, as our vestry members are being seated, um, be praying for these folks. Please. Um, as one person said, when you are called of the Lord to step into certain roles, it's like the enemy tries to put a big bullseye right here or right here. And so pray for God's protection, for God's wisdom, for God's leading in all of the deliberations and decisions that we make together. Uh, we operate in unity, which means we don't do up-down votes, you know, um, four to three or that sort of thing. We, we work through something until we all come to a common mind and unity on it and move forward. And so that's how we actually selected wardens yesterday as well through an extended time of prayer and also our secretary registrar. So now as our kids are coming in, um, finally, in just a few moments, we'll be coming to Holy Communion and all baptized Christians who are endeavoring to lead a godly life are invited to receive communion here at All Saints Church. 
As the usher's direct you, you'll come to the rail and you'll line up beginning at the center on both sides, working out and all the way around the corners and kneeling, or if kneeling is difficult, it's certainly appropriate to stand. As we come to you, you simply hold your hand out like this. We will place the bread in your hand and then you do one of two things. Either you, excuse me, either you partake of the bread and then drink directly from the chalice or you retain the bread dip it slightly into the wine and partake of the bread and wine together. If for any reason you see, receive bread only or wine only that is still full and valid communion, please be assured. Um, we also have gluten-free wafers for those who need them. Who needs gluten-free in here this morning? Let's do four, okay? Gluten-free will be available anywhere to my left, your right along the rail um, with a separate pat patent and separate chalice. And if for any reason you don't receive communion here this morning, you're invited to come forward for a prayer of blessing. You can indicate that by crossing your arms like this when you come to the rail, or you can remain in your seat in prayer, whichever is most comfortable for you. And then as we do every Sunday in this service for those who don't receive communion here in person, as well as for everyone watching via the live stream, um, at the end of the communion liturgy, we'll, we will pray the prayer for spiritual communion. If you have any mobility issues and it'd be easier to receive communion where you are seated, please let the ushers know, and we'll be very happy to accommodate that request. And then finally, there are prayer team members who will be over to my far left along the wall, your far right during communion. If you have a um, prayer request that you would like individual prayer for, I encourage you to avail yourself of that opportunity. And so now I would invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please stand as you're able for the doxology.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and And of of your your own own have we we given you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Please sit or kneel as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ Christ has died, died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Praying together. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. Apart from your grace, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
<clears throat> and now for those who have not received communion here in person, as well as those watching via the live stream, we will pray the prayer for spiritual communion. It is prayer number 106 on page 677 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 677. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never, Never permit, permit me, me to, to be, be separated, separated from, from you. you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for feeding us, us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.